Hey everyone, David Cobley here with Familias with Cardi Wines. Uh, thank you so much to Jim and Cork and Table for having me. Thank you to my good friend uh, John Levitt with Winebow for helping set this up. I'm excited uh, for this opportunity to do this uh, new way of, of wine dinner uh, with you guys. So um, it's a certainly unique uh, process and uh, I appreciate you all for participating. Uh, so it gives us all an opportunity to continue sharing our passion uh, for things that we love like wine and food. So uh, I'm glad you're all here and I hope you enjoy the wines. I know you're going to enjoy the meal uh, by looking at the menu. It's absolutely incredible. Um, so I'm the national sales manager and brand ambassador to the U.S. for Familia Zucardi. And we have two properties, uh, two wineries. One is Bodega Santa Julia, which you'll start off with your bubbles. And the other one is, is uh, Zucardi Valle de Uco. It's a third generation family owned company. Uh, with Alberto Zuccardi starting the, the company in the 1960s. Jose Zuccardi is a second generation, put them on the map in the late 80s, early 90s, uh, when he first exported the wines to the U.S. Uh, and now elsewhere around the world. And then his children, uh, Sebastian Zuccardi and Julio Zuccardi, are both part of the family in, in, their own, in their own ways. Sebastian being the lead winemaker over both properties. He oversees all, all of winemaking. Uh, he's a rock star of a winemaker from Argentina. Perhaps you've heard of him. If not, you know, if you, if you Google Argentina, Mendoza, Uco Valley, Sebastian's sure to pop up. His sister Julia, uh, for which the, the Bodega Santa Julia is named, uh, Jose named the winery after her. She oversees uh, hotel and hospitality. Uh, and helped start the first restaurant uh, attached to any winery in Argentina called Casa de Visitantes. And now we have three restaurants uh, between the two properties. Uh, and so she's very, very busy with that. Um, so wonderful family, very passionate, very hardworking family. Uh, so know that when you're drinking their wines, you're supporting a really great hardworking people. Uh, so for the first course, we're doing the San Julio Brut Rosé. It's made from 100% Pinot Noir grapes. Uh, and it's paired with the beautiful Brie Beltois. It's a triple cream cheese and cherry spread. I think the beautiful aromas of, of strawberry and fruit flavors of strawberry and cherry that you get from the wine are gonna go really great with that uh, cherry spread. And of course the bubbles and acidity uh, will help cut through uh, that nice creamy cheese. Um, so that sounds really good to me. I hope you enjoy that. Next up we have the 2018 Zuccardi Q Series Chardonnay. So we have a number of different ranges with Zuccardi. This is our mid-tier level, the Q series. Uh, so uh, just to help for future reference, if you're looking for the wines, the Q series is kind of our mid-tier. Uh, the wines under the Series A label would be uh, our entry level. And then we go up to some interesting things, which some of which you'll have uh, tonight. So it's the Zuccardi Q Chardonnay with the lobster and scallop chowder. Uh, the Q Chardonnay is a very... Um, acid, elegant, uh, un mostly unoaked style of Chardonnay, which I really love. It's much more kind of old world in style. It has a nice uh, richness and weight that you might find in the new world, but nice acidity and minerality that you would find in the old world places like Burgundy. Um, so it's raised, ma raised mainly in concrete vats with about 30% of it seeing neutral oak barrels. Uh, so really, really nice, uh, beautiful, bright, gorgeous Chardonnay. Uh, then we have the 2013 Zuccardi Q Tempranillo with salchicha and manchego salad. Uh, I think this is really cool. Tempranillo is some of our oldest vines uh, at Zuccardi family. Uh, Tempranillo is a, is a grape originally from the Rioja region of Spain. It's very fruit forward um, and you get nice leather notes and spicy black pepper notes. Um, and then of course that will pair well with the spiciness of the salchicha and then the saltiness and, 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 and nuttiness that you get from manchego cheese. What I like about this pairing is that you have salchicha, which is traditional Argentine sausage, and you have manchego, which is very traditional Spanish cheese. So the, the nature of the wine being a grape from Spain made in Argentina, and then you have a Spanish cheese with a traditional, uh, with a traditional South American sausage, I think is, is a really nice play. Here, so thank you to Jen. That's really creative. I think that's really, really cool. Um, I'm jealous of your entire meal, but I'm especially jealous of the next course in which you have the uh, Wagyu filet with foie gras. I mean, oh my God. Um, and then that's going to be paired with two different Malbecs from the Zuccardi Polygonos line, which is a relatively new uh, project that Sebastian started just a few years ago. Um, 
We have the 2016 Zuccardi Polygonos Paraje Altamira Malbec, and you have the 2017 Zuccardi Polygonos Tupungato Alto Malbec. Now you're wondering what those words mean. Paraje Altamira is the name of the village in the Uco Valley in Mendoza, Argentina. So is Tupungato Alto. So the theory behind this particular line of wines uh, was that it would be if you're if you're familiar with Burgundy that this would be a, a more of a village village level approach to wines so that you're talking more about the place and thinking more about the place than the grape itself. So both of these are 100% Malbec. They're uh, all parts equal, uh, all Malbec, all from the same producer, all from the same region called the Uco Valley, but different subregions or as we like to say villages. So. For Paraje Altamira, that Malbec, and they're both unoat. So that Paraje Altamira, for that one, you get this beautiful expression of red fruit and violet fruit and beautiful herbaceous notes. But also what I love about wine from Paraje Altamira is that it has this beautiful texture. So you'll notice this grippy kind of chalky texture that you get from these very, very stony soils you find in Paraje Altamira. It's very close to the base of the Andes Mountains at 3,600 feet in elevation and has a beautiful expression, offers a beautiful identity to the wines. Now when you taste the other one, Tupungato Alto, it's much more fruity. Tupungato Alto is about 4,000, 4,200 feet in elevation where this vineyard site is. And it's stony soil, but not quite as stony, not quite as large a stone, so you don't quite get that same texture. And although it's higher in altitude, it's further east from the base of the Andes Mountains, so it's actually a little bit warmer. You don't get quite as much mountain influence as you do in Paraje Altamira. So it's much more fruity, uh, much more rounder mouthfeel. Uh, and so I hope you enjoy this, this unique opportunity to see the diversity uh, of Malbec and the uniqueness that these, that these different villages offer when tasting the wines. Um, so look for these in the future. Maybe you find one that you like, a style that you like, and start to, to follow that village, whether it be Altamira or Tupungato, and I'll find other wines from those places to see what, what the different wines taste like from different producers. Um, and cert last but certainly not least, we have the Zuccardi Concreto. Very, very special wine. Uh, it was the first wine that Sebastian made that was uh, fermented and aged entirely in concrete vats. And that vintage was 2014. And he was, he was inspired because he was enamored with the expression and the quality of grapes that you find in Paraje Altamira, where the winery is located and where their very uh, special vineyard site is located. It's called Piedra Infinita, which means infinite stones because there's so many huge stones uh, in this vineyard site which offer a unique aspect and texture, uh, and flavor, acidity to the wine. Um, so he, he decided to make a wine that he says has no makeup. So you don't see any oak at all. It's not, you know, very hands-off uh, approach. Uh, it spends all of its life in concrete vats. And this also prompted Sebastian to look more into the future at making other wines that also are mostly uh, 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 fermented and aged in concrete vats. They're um, they're neutral vessels. They don't impart any flavor. They just allow you to preserve the beautiful flavors of the grape that come from a very specific place. Uh, so you can see the identity uh, that these beautiful villages offer to the wines. So um, for those of you that uh, are interested in press, these wines all have really, really nice press, really nice scores. Feel free to look them up. Um, otherwise, there's, I, think, I think they're just really good wines on their own. I hope you learned a little bit more about the Zuccardi family uh, and what we do, and, and, and of course more about the place Mendoza and the Uco Valley. Uh, thank you, Jim, so much for having me on here. Uh, thank you again to uh, John Levitt, and I appreciate you all again for coming and supporting, and, uh, uh, and I hope you're enjoying these wines, and I know you're enjoying the incredible meal. Uh, I'm sure the pairings are working out beautifully. Thanks for your support, and I look forward to seeing you all again in person and sharing a beautiful meal together in the future. Cheers.